cleaned up and right before you can come to God. God says, I come to you. I'm the God who seeks because I love people. I'm the God who finds because I love people. I'm the God who's passionate about being with you. And I will do anything it takes to find you. I'm going to tear the house apart if I had to. i destroy the universe if I had to simply to find you. Amen. That's what I'm about. You see, when we lose stuff, my glasses, they might be in the back of my truck. You can tell I'm worried about it. <laughs> Lost the credit card. A little more concerned. I had to look for it a little bit. But I wasn't stressed. I had another one. I could call and get another one shipped if I needed to. But my wife, after I proposed to her, got to work one day in Michigan in the winter with snow on the ground. And Looked down at her engagement ring and realized that the diamond was gone. It was not a big diamond. It was only worth about four thousand dollars. I'm sorry, I lied in church. Um, it wasn't worth very much at all. It was a small ring, small diamond. But she looked down and it was gone. You know what she did? She said, "All right, I got eight hours of work, and I'm going to go out with some friends." And I'll go home and look for it. <laughs> Not. She immediately started walking back, track, retracing her steps back out to her car in Michigan in the winter with a lot of snow, with a lot of sparkly things. Back to the car, looked at the car, looked on the floorboards, looked all around, got in the car, drove home, back up the driveway, walked back up towards the house, looking at every step, looking at everything, trying to find it, going, there's no way I'm going to find this thing, but I'm going to look anyway. Called me, I was in New York, yeah, I lost the diamond fell out. We're praying, God, please help me find it. Why? Because it was worth so much money? No, because it was valuable to her. Walked up the stairs, found it in the bath mat on the floor of the bathroom. Somehow, among all the carpet, found this little diamond. And let me tell you, there was rejoicing when that happened. Not because, ooh, that rock was so valuable that Donald Trump would have given us a lot of money for it. But because it was worth so much to her, because she declared that it was worthwhile. She declared it had value. She said, this is important to me. And that's the way that God looks at you. He says, you are that important to me. You are that deeply, deeply loved. And when she finds it, verse 9, when she finds it, she'll call on her friends and neighbors and say, rejoice with me. Because I found my lost coin. Rejoice with me, because I lost. My, I found my lost coin. And there's a party. There's a party going on in heaven because she's found that that coin. Again. You ever been to a baptism? Mm -hmm. You know, a baptism in a church, and you wonder if the people were dead. <laughs> I've been in churches where where the lost are found, and <clears throat> someone's baptized, and they say. That's the party in heaven. Really. I don't think that's rejoicing in heaven with the God who made thunder. No. The God of heaven is throwing a party because the lost have been found because he's declared this thing has value. This thing is great. This thing is awesome. And it's you and you've been lost and you've been found. Even though you were raised in the church and brought up in the church and knew your memory person and could sing Jesus loves me. Since before you were born, you came out of the womb singing Jesus loves me. You knew it all, but you were lost. You thought you had to work really hard to make God like you. You didn't realize that Jesus just loved you, so you hung out in the church, but kind of hiding underneath the furniture, hoping no one would notice and hoping God wouldn't look too closely at you because you might not measure up. And you miss that God is just passionately excited about you. Look at you going, you're mine! Amen. But I'm 